So if you're a Twitch streamer, you know how important the channel point system is for building a community and user engagement. But did you know there is an alternative if you're not a Twitch streamer? And that is Streamlabs loyalty point system, which we'll get into a comparison between the two right now. So the first we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the channel point system in Twitch's setup, and then we're going to do the same thing for Streamlabs, and then we'll compare the two of them. First thing you want to do is you want to go into your creator dashboard, and on the left-hand side under your menu, you want to go all the way down to viewer rewards, click on channel points, and now you can see how you get into it. If you're a Streamlabs user, what you want to do is you want to go into the Streamlabs dashboard, go down here to CloudBot, and you want to go over to loyalty, and then you're going to go into setting. So now let's compare them side by side. And you're going to see there's a lot of similarities between the two of them, but there are also some key differences which are important on both sides. So starting on the left here for Twitch, the basic thing you want to do is you want to enable channel points. On the Streamlabs side, once you've clicked into loyalty and settings, you have something very similar. You can enable or disable the loyalty system. You can give it a custom name, and then you can get into some of the further settings. Now, a difference here is that on the Twitch side, you can actually edit what the point display looks like. So you can upload a custom icon, which is displayed right on top of the Twitch interface. And it gives you an idea of what it looks like. You can have it reset to a default, which is just, it's just a basic image, but you don't have an option to do any kind of special graphic for Streamlabs. And now we're gonna get into the rewards and challenges. So when you get in here, this is where you're gonna see where you can set up in Twitch all of the different rewards that you have, whether they're enabled or disabled, you can edit the description, you can edit the image icon that is associated with them, or you can delete it completely. You can do the same thing over here in Streamlabs by going under store, which is right next to loyalty. And you can again, scroll down and you can have all of these, the same exact rewards. You can have a description, you can determine how often they can be used, how frequently they can be used in your stream in general and by person. And you can also upload an image. Let's get into this from the creating a point reward for Twitch. We're going to scroll down and I'm going to hit add a new custom reward. And just to keep it side by side, I'm going to hit create new item for Streamlabs. So first thing you can tell is it immediately looks very different. On the Twitch side, you can give it a name, give it a description. You can enter the amount of points that they have to use in order to get it. And Twitch gives you a tip of how many points people earn on average, as well as how many subs earn on average. You can go set a background for that, for the icon if you'd like. You can determine whether this reward can skip the queue if you want it to go straight to the front. Um, and you can determine whether you want to edit the cooldown and limits at all or how you want to do that on the and when you're all done you hit create on the Streamlabs side it's a little bit different setup so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to determine is this a perk is this a found sound effect or is it going to give somebody an access code you don't have the ability to specify sound effect and access code directly in here in twitch but you can actually set it up with sound effect just like twitch you can go and enter a name and we're going to just do test and we're going to do test as a description and you can determine the cost the quantity the global cooldown and the user cooldown the cost is directly attributable to the twitch with the enter amount uh the quantity though is a little bit different so minus one means unlimited it means you can use it as many times as you want anything else you put in here is going to determine how many times it can be used for that stream Global cooldown, as the tooltip says, is the value in seconds between how often people can select it. And if you were going to do that in Twitch, you would go under, you would activate the cooldowns and limits, and you would type in the number of minutes or hours or days between cooldown. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this by default here. We're going to hit next and on here, because you're looking for something, we're going to do this. We're going to do one, let's make that 10 and this is and I'm going to go down and I'm going to disable this. And as far as Twitch is concerned, you're good. You're done. If you wanted to do anything else, you could go ahead and set that up in here, adding your image, all that stuff. It's all here on this one page and you're all done. Hit create. 
Streamlabs is a little bit different. They have a multi-page setup. So besides the first page I showed you, I can go add the image. I can add a sound file. This is going to be mainly if I'm going to be doing the sound effect and a redeem shows alert, redeem via chat. The way that it works is I show you an example done here, exclamation redeem, and then curly brackets, it says command. So what you actually want to do is you would want to just write whatever you want the command word to be. The rest is going to be automatic. So they're going to type in exclamation redeem space test. You don't need to worry about the curly brackets. And now I'm going to go and hit, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next page. And this is where I'm going to be able to select my images. So on the image page, I'm just going to select whatever image it is that I want to add. And then when I'm all done, I can go ahead, select that, so show it up here. I can do the same thing for a sound file if that's what I was going to be doing. Now I can hit next. And this is any additional requirements such as address, email, or phone number. I can just hit save and I'd be done just like I could hit create here. So as you can see, it really is very similar between the two of them in terms of what it is that you can set up. As far as Twitch is concerned, this is all you need to worry about. You just create it, you add your images, any other parameters, create, and it's done. However, you have a lot more functionality with Streamlabs outside of this basic setup information. And one of the areas where you have a lot of functionality that you can use is under the setting. So this is back in that loyalty and under store. And we're just going to maximize this here because we're going to focus on Streamlabs. So besides enabling or disabling the loyalty system you, and setting the name, you can get a lot more granular, granular with your control on how points are rewarded. On Twitch, it's just one way. If you're not a sub, you're in 220 points an hour. If you are a sub, you can earn up to 440 points per hour. So you can use that to determine how often you, how much your reward should actually cost based on what they are. Their value to you, you're the value to your community. You can do the same thing here on, on Streamlabs, same concept, but you can just, you can determine more specifically what you do. So you can say, you know, um, if somebody is active and this really means how much, or if they are chatting. So you can say, okay, if somebody is an active user, they're participating in chat, you can decide to award them more points. You can also decide how often points are rewarded. The way it works on Twitch is you earn points at a set frequency, but you can't determine that frequency. Here, I could have this be one minute. I could have this be an hour. I could have this be whatever I want in minutes. You can also determine additional payouts based on events. So if somebody subscribes to your channel, which in this case it's YouTube, so subscribing to my channel would just be following, then that would go ahead and I would say, okay, if you, if you follow the channel, I'm going to give you a certain amount of points. If you become a member of my channel, I'm going to give you a certain amount of points. Member in YouTube terminology is equivalent to a subscriber in Twitch's terminology. And you can also say, if you give me a donation or a super chat or whatever, I'm going to give you extra points. So you can really specify how much points you want to hand out to people on Streamlabs. Another great thing you can do on Streamlabs loyalty system is if I click on this user, because Streamlabs works with Twitch and YouTube, um, I can actually see how many points people have across those two platforms side by side. Now, what you're seeing here is you're seeing a majority of Twitch because I until recently was a Twitch streamer. Now I'm doing more YouTube streaming. So, you know, there's not going to be as many points. Actually, we order this by points. So you see a lot of the top people here are from Twitch. It isn't until you get down to the second page that you start to see some, some YouTube people. Because, again, I have only been on streaming on YouTube for a couple weeks. And besides the points, you see the hours. And you can do a comparison to see how your formulas are working in Streamlabs versus how your formulas were working in. So, again, I can go and edit this. And what I can do here is I can update how many points this user has. I can also increase their uh, amount of time watched. I don't know why you would want to do that personally, but you can if you'd like to. Another thing you can do is you could wipe this all out and start over. Or I could go and add points to all viewers. You just saw an example of how I could do it individually, but this allows me to do, add points to all viewers as a blanket amount. And, and I go to store one additional thing you can see here versus what you can do in Twitch is I can click on history. Now what history will show me is how many rewards have been 
uh, redeemed and when they have been redeemed. And that counts for stream perks, sound effects, and access codes. You can see what you fulfilled, what is unfulfilled. And you can also see your own personal redemptions if you went on somebody else's Streamlabs and you actually redeemed a reward. So as you can see, the two systems are very similar. You can replicate the functionality for Twitch's channel points with Streamlabs loyalty system. However, you have a lot more access to some uh, analytics there by looking at the users. You can maintain the users and their points a lot more granular inside of Streamlabs and the settings, how often and how many points you give out in Streamlabs is completely customizable, unlike YouTube, unlike Twitch, which tells you exactly how they're going to reward points. One of the main differences that I can't really demonstrate for you here is the implementation of it. So as you know, in Twitch, you have the ability to have your channel points show up as one of the panels or components in your live stream. So people can see how many points they have. They can click on that and there's a list for them of points that they can redeem, which is great. Very handy, user friendly. Streamlabs, on the other hand, because their system works within the Streamlabs platform and not tied to a specific streaming platform. This is basically you have to show people the rewards they can get and they have to go through an extra step to be able to see the points they have and to redeem them. The way it works on Streamlabs is you can see the points by typing in exclamation points. That's all you have to type in, hit enter. And then after a few seconds, it will come up and show you, you have this many points. And then if you want to redeem anything, you type in exclamation redeem. And then the command name that you gave the reward for the user. Now, displaying it is where it gets a little bit tricky on with Streamlabs setup because it's again, it is not built into any other platform. So the way that I choose to do it is on my YouTube live streams below the video, I have a list of all my channel points and that allows people to see what is available a short description of it, the point cost of it, and the command name for them to use when they want to redeem it. Yes, it is an extra step, but it is a fantastic option if you want to use a channel point like system, but you're not actually streaming on YouTube. So there you go. That is a breakdown of channel points versus a loyalty system with Twitch versus Streamlabs. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more.